Welcome to It Takes Two. I'm Blair. I'm Chris. And today we'll be talking about Love is Blind UK Season 1, Episode 1. Y'all let us come back in the country. Listen here, I need y'all to subscribe, like, share, all the above. This has been a UK summer for us. Yes. We just did Love Island USA and Love Island UK. So you can check that playlist out. We did practically every episode, but not the After Sons. And I am excited about Love Island Season 1. I mean, Love is Blind season one <laughs> yes. of the UK version. You ready for this, Blair? I'm ready. Okay, let's go. So we are introduced to our hosts, Emmanuel and Matt Willis. Okay. Um, they tell us a bit about the premise of the show, which is the contestants will have 10 days mm -hmm. to be in the pause doing their dating. They will get engaged. Then after that, meet their fiance, move in. After four weeks, they will then be at their wedding and will have to decide if they want to get married or not. Practically love is blind. Yes. Yes. So we are introduced to Freddie, who's 32, a mm -hmm. funeral director, and Catherine, 29, a dental nurse. So he's from Manchester. She's from Jersey. Yeah. She's also a swimming coach. They both um, are really into the gym. He tells her he goes twice a, a day. She mm -hmm. says she knew it. He shares that his brother has Down syndrome and he also has a sister. Mm -hmm. And just coincidentally, she teaches Down syndrome kids how to swim. Just off her first feel, what did you feel from Freddie and Catherine? I thought that they were a good match from first watch. Me too. I thought that they connected. It was interesting how just their interests and just kind of life situations um, kind of crossed paths. Yeah. So it was good. The minute that I heard that he was a funeral director and he said something across the lines of it's hard for him to date because of his profession a little bit. Mm -hmm. I'm like, hey, ladies, this is actually a good profession to actually go after besides rapper. Uh -huh. besides you know uh, a, a a a a social media star and things like that people always gonna die so he always gonna have a job That's you true. get what i'm saying let's keep going so we meet ollie who's 32 yeah he has a date with Catherine. Mm. they both are into each other's voice at first mm -hmm. um for fun she likes brunch she likes going out for drinks with the girls yeah he likes to box and train and they talk about how they both might train together sometime okay he asks her what she thinks about marriage and she wants somebody to do fun stuff stuff with like she wants to live life together not mm -hmm. just kind of boring mundane day to day mm -hmm. and they really hit it off um first impression and that's the first sign of toxic that i got from Catherine. Mm, how so because when she says she just want to have fun mm -hmm. and then we start going down the line and later on in the episodes and things of that nature where she usually hang out with and things like that that particularly gave her kind of like a red flag to Ali. Mm -hmm. I was like, yeah, marriage is a mature thing. And I understand you don't want to do the same, the same thing over and over again. But, um, when she said fun, it made me go back to what she said about how she have a habit of always bringing the wrong guy to meet her parents and things mm -hmm. like that of dating the wrong guy. And I'm like, because you're probably dating the fun guy. Oh. You get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And because you want to be the fun girl. So I, that made me go, mm, my toxic meter with Catherine's is, <laughs> It's jumping a it's little singling. bit. Mm -hmm. Okay. So then uh, we get to learn a little bit more about Ollie. He's yeah. 32. He's mm -hmm. in software sales. He usually dates with his eyes, but due to this situation, he's not going to be distracted by that. Mm -hmm. He is looking for a long time partner or long term partner. Mm -hmm. And people say that he looks like Craig David. Do you see it? A little bit. Okay. Kind of. I'm tired of people coming <laughs> on here saying I look like. Okay. Let's keep going. So then we've got Ollie and Demi. Mm -hmm. Demi is 30. She is a safeguarding and attendance manager. Mm -hmm. They are both from London. On weekends, she plays football on Sunday. Mm -hmm. On Saturdays, she just likes to eat good food, drink, listen to good music, and just kind of chill and enjoy vibes. Yeah. Uh, she finds out that they both actually box. Um, they talk about going to the arcade and mm -hmm. just kind of having a little bit of banter about who's going to win what games and stuff like that. Yeah. He wants kids, but he knows some some people can't have kids yeah. or don't or they don't want children. So um, that's something that she asked him about when it came to kids. And mm. she liked the way that he answered that to just to be mindful and respectful of the woman that he would be trying to do that with. Yeah. He feels that with marriage, he would need a friendship. And he feels that he already has that with Demi. Do you have any um, thoughts on that? Um, no thoughts as of yet. I, I was laughing when Demi said that sometimes, you know, she get to be um um two stones uh uh she be plus two stones and then sometimes she be minus two stones mm -hmm. and i'm like 
we're back at zero. Yeah. And things like that. She basically said, like, you know, she's she's a curvy girl. You get what I'm saying? But I like to hear that she's athletic, though. I yeah. really do. Mm-hmm. So Ollie is feeling sexual vibes from Catherine, but he's feeling Demi more. Mm. Catherine is feeling Ollie, but no one has told her that they're into Ollie at this point mm. yet as okay. well <laughs> okay okay so sabrina uh is 35 she's a director of marketing right. we learned that her grandma passed away and she would just like to not come home to an empty house okay steven is 37 and he is a gym owner so they have their date he asked if she would relocate to him um she said that she would relocate there are more opportunities in london than belfast mm-hmm. he owns a crossfit gym mm-hmm. steven says that his parents broke up when he was 16 yeah. he has all brothers went to an all boys school growing up so it's kind of a big deal or not a big deal but he just finds it interesting that he knows how to talk to and deal with women because he's like such a boy's boy okay sabrina is very adventurous spontaneous and considerate yeah. he jokes that she has his script over there like you're talking about me Mm. (laughs) so they're both into meditation she doesn't do the cold showers um, but they both also kind of focus on gratitude and do their gratitude journals Mm -hmm. she's all about adding value to each other's lives and partnership and he's smiling um, and feels that they share the same mindset okay any thoughts on those connections i thought that they were really like a match made in heaven really i felt like they um, just it seemed like just their vibe and their energy they got along super well yeah. it didn't seem like very forced and it also seemed that they enjoyed each other just in conversation mm-hmm. and they do share a lot of um, similar things as far as um, gratitude and um, just kind of how do I say like I feel like just appreciating just the small things in life you know yeah mm-hmm. I don't know how to describe it mm-hmm. but I guess to 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 put just a little um Mm, and what you said Mm -hmm. it's just something it about it yeah they have that it factor i don't know now they may not have everything uh figured out right you know the the things that make the everyday uh the everyday logistics of a marriage work Mm -hmm. but they have the it you get what i'm saying and 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 i'm like hmm okay spark the chemistry yeah 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 yeah, and it can be seen you're right you're right So it's the next day, Mm -hmm. Sam 31, he didn't always like his experience um, or his appearance. Sorry. Okay. He had a nose job. Stop right there. Okay. That already put me in one red flag on Sam. Mm Mm-hmm. Right. Um, That already lets me know there's some type of confidence issue, confidence Mm -hmm. issue with Sam. Mm -hmm. You get what I'm saying? We going to learn more about Sam, especially in in the next episode. But when he said he got a nose job because he always didn't like his appearance, I'm like, oh, you basically have a confidence issue as well Mm -hmm. and things like that, especially since it wasn't a nose job in the sense of he was injured and needed something to be repaired. I think it was something to basically help him feel good about his uh, his appearance. And that really stuck out to me. I'm like, Sam, you may be a little too. Mm -hmm. uh, 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 What's the word? Clingy. You get what I'm saying? He may be a little too clingy, but Mm -hmm. but but let's keep going. Uh, Since knowing he'd be on the show, he really got heavily into the gym. He started taking his skincare serious Mm -hmm. and he really wants the next wedding he goes to to be his. Now, when I was hearing all these things about Sam at first, I didn't kind of ring any red flag Mm -hmm. to me. Mm -hmm. Um, But just kind of going back and like listening to it. You see it. It just seems like he was trying to get TV ready. Mm. And the thing is. At first glance, that doesn't look bad because who doesn't want to be their best selves or show their best selves on television? Yeah, yeah. But the fact that he said it in the way that he said it was just kind of like, I did everything I needed to to prepare yeah, for my moment. You're right. And this is my moment. Come like, on, that's Blair. what it came across as. <laughs> and and the funny thing about it is, uh-huh. he could have not let us know this. Right. He could have done all these things and not said nothing about it. Or even there was one girl who did lose weight, but that isn't what she led with. You mm, know what I mean? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. Don't I, was, worry about it. I was just like, yeah, it, it seems like he's here for the TV. Hey, so. hey Sam, Sam, Sam. We see you. Uh-huh. Keep going, Dobler. So he wants his wife to be his best friend. Yeah. He wants girls to give him a chance. Girls tend to think that he's looking for a one night stand just because of his appearance. And mm-hmm. he's telling all this to Jasmine that just on my profile pictures or things like that, like people just don't take me seriously. Okay. Okay. Sam then talks to Nicole, who is 29. Yeah. He asked her, excuse me, he asked her if she trains and she says that she works out. Okay. He says that he trains. 
he does <laughs> yoga uh-huh. and and she said oh that's something you know that i could teach you like that's something that she's well versed in yeah yeah he asked if she's big on family and nicole says that she believes that you can choose your family mm-hmm. sam says you can choose your husband and if you saw me i think you would be impressed that right there <laughs> <laughs> hey brother you don't even got 15 minutes on the screening you are basically for for once for for one you start off with the whole i got a nose job because i ain't like the way i look and now like i like the way i look and now you didn't say but because of the, of the way i look people think i want one night stands but now you're kind of leading with the you will be impressed if you see how i look yeah so it's just like what are you trying to do here sam like sam is trying to lead with his looks which honestly don't think he should be doing that. No, no, he shouldn't be doing that, brother. <laughs> you shouldn't be doing I would that. advise you not to. I'm about to say. But um, focus on what you came here for. And yeah. that's building genuine connections with your genuine personality. Mm. But I don't know if he has one. Because so. it may be bland. Mm. See, the whole reason why you have a whole screen in front of you that has nothing on it mm-hmm. is so that you don't lead with your looks. Right. You get what I'm saying? But mm-hmm. he he's making it sure that, like, hey, I think you'd be impressed. You get what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And, and, and it wouldn't sound that bad. Or maybe we would have been able to skim over it if 10 things within the Sam appearance, he's talking about how he looks. Right. You get what I'm saying? Right. Well, Nicole asked him to try to get on a deeper level. If you could look back on your life, like, what would you see? What would you say about it? Yeah. And he says that it would be kind of like a romance or a love novel. Yeah, yeah. He just wants someone to give him a chance. Mm-hmm. Nicole tells him that he's making her afraid um, because it just sounds like he's saying all the right things. Translation, you scaring me. Mm-hmm. This is this is the translation when they say, "Hey, brother, you're scaring the girls away," <laughs> and, and, and and girls is is really the PG version. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. With with with, with Sam, it's like you're talking about these things, these external things that really have nothing to do with you. Mm. You're you're included in it, but it's not about you. That's why she could kind of feel or get a sense that hey, you're kind of leading with this story it feels like it's lacking authenticity yes it's yeah. like it's like you're leading with a template mm. it's kind of like you know how when y'all was getting jobs and stuff like that and nobody here watching this show and nobody here probably up here used their original template they got a template just you know let me erase that let me erase that let me erase that let me erase that and it just seems like that it just seems like okay who are you yeah besides this person that you are quote-unquote think that somebody would want mm. you know what i mean so Nicole then talks to Benaya, who is 33. Yeah. He's from Preston, um, but now he's technically homeless. Mm. But he clarifies and says that he freelances and he just house sits wherever he works. That is a priority. <laughs> All I'm saying is if you go be somebody's husband, I would think you would want to make sure that you have at least a place that you could call home. Yeah. You know? So Nicole loves the idea of an off-grid lifestyle. Yeah. She works a corporate job, but for her, it's a, pretty much just a means to an end. She mm. wants to have the freedom to do whatever she wants to do. Yeah. And for fun, she does hiking and sometimes naked yoga. Okay. Nicole, I see you. Now, I just, just a little thought here. Help I don't me. know if it holds any weight just yet. Hope. But I feel like with Nicole... Um, I think she likes the idea of Benaya and the freelance homeless living. Mm-hmm. Um, but the fact that she has a corporate job and thinks of it as a means to an end, I think she might appreciate security more than the um, thought or the aesthetic of a living roaming free. Okay. Like, okay. I think like when she talks about it, it sounds like, yes, it's something that she wants. Mm-hmm. But I'm like, are you willing to give up your security for that? Is Benaya going to be able to meet you in that place of settling down? And it's kind of hard to gather that at this point but that's yeah. what i'm saying it's a little early to say but that was kind of like my initial thought of she's saying she wants it but uh-huh. is it what she really wants to live out yeah you know? yeah what i thought of it's funny benaya is his name yeah benaya and nicole the first thought that came to mind was stella got her groove back okay that's the first thing that ha- did 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 you ever read that book or like I see that movie, movie. Mm-hmm. right it's basically nicole come off as someone who is basically in the corporate world who's basically like you know very regular and when i say regular i don't mean it in a bad thing but like hey i go to work i come home every now and then i may do yoga i may go for a hike but is there something about mysterious about benaya and adventurous Mm. that is very like oh 
quit your job and come and come with me and, and we just basically okay where are we gonna live i don't know and in the idea of it to your point sound mm-hmm. excite exciting to the whole point of stella got a groove back with the whole thing of like you've been living this regular life and just a little excitement mm-hmm. or just some a little unknown oh, okay kind of makes it like Ooh, this is a roller coaster. Mm-hmm. But I don't know if you want to marry the roller coaster more than you just want to experience it. Mm-hmm. You get what I'm saying? Everybody would love to visit an amusement park, but would you live there? Right. You get what I'm saying? Unless your name was Michael Jackson. Right. You get what I'm saying? Who built one in his backyard or front yard. You get what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So then we get to Sabrina and Steven. Yeah. He said that he got emotional when he left their last date. Mm-hmm. Um, things just left off on a really good note for him. Yeah. He's looking for someone to grow with and have new adventures and experiences with um, but still individually have our own lives do our own things okay Sabrina wants someone who is confident um, in themselves and Stephen wears <laughs> we find out that he wears things to get attention he's a speedos guy okay so they discuss what they're wearing and she mentions that she has her granny's bracelet and ring on mm-hmm. apparently his grandfather passed away when he was eight and he has this ring of his grandfather's that he wears all the time yeah she wants a marriage um, before kids because he asked her about how do you feel about children and she she wants a marriage, a solid marriage before children. Mm-hmm. And if she doesn't have kids, she would be okay with that. He wants to have a child. Yeah. She uh, feels deflated by how the conversation ended. They didn't really further discuss like what they meant or how they felt or mm-hmm. anything like that. It just kind of sounded like mm, me, we might want different things when it comes to children. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I think well, the older I get, um, do I... I don't want anything that I don't have full control over. Okay. So when it comes to children, I don't really put my eggs in the basket of, oh, I need to have a child for this to work. Mm -hmm. When I was ignorant and not married and, and, and truthfully didn't respect women to like the point that I actually learn and know about what they go through in childbirth and Mm -hmm. things like that. It's like, yeah, if, if, if she don't want a child or can't give me a child, she can't be with me. (laughs) You get what I'm saying? (laughs) But I hold no power in that. Mm. I'm, I'm a contributor. Mm -hmm. You get what I'm saying? So if it ever comes a time to where I don't have kids, I can't let that be the deal breaker for me because that's not something that I can fully control. Right. You get what I'm saying? So, um, I always feel uneasy whenever I hear somebody use that as a deal breaker mm-hmm. um, to say like, well, you know, like I, I want a child. Both people can want children, but things can happen when it comes to natural birth, that is. And then yeah. when it comes to a, 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 a adoption and, and maybe fostering to adoption, of course, there's things that you could do to help uh, get to your goal. Mm-hmm. But I've learned, at least for me personally, mm-hmm. I don't use children as a deal breaker for me anymore because I don't have full control in that. And that's interesting because I feel the opposite. Really? I feel that when you are um, going into a relationship in, in these dating situations, mm-hmm. You guys should be on the same thing as far as what you want for your life. Yeah. So if you guys want marriage, then you should both ag- agree on wanting marriage. Mm-hmm. And if you want kids, that should be something you agree on. Yeah. Now, if time goes on and you and certain things don't work out yeah. or you have to figure out situations, that's fine. Mm-hmm. But I don't think that, you know, in a situation where someone wants kids and, and another person is kind of like, uh, you know, it could be whatever. Um, mm-hmm. That might not be the best option because one person might feel resentful for the other person yeah, because yeah, I right. told you what I wanted yet you continue the relationship making me think that it could possibly happen mm-hmm, you mm-hmm. know um, but for this situation I just felt like they needed to continue the conversation um, yeah. because it didn't sound like she was against having kids mm-hmm. and because of that I would have wanted to learn more about her stance yeah so I agree So moving on, um, Jasmine, 29, she is a mental health nurse and she has been single for three years. Her ex was expecting a baby with somebody else. Um, So she is here to find her soulmate. Well, here comes Sam. Sam is here. (laughs) She has some doubts from their last conversation just about um, the comment he made about people perceiving him as something different than he is mm-hmm. or whatever online and sam clarifies that he will post a pic with his top off um but or it, he'll like stand at a bar and maybe get some attention from a girl mm-hmm. but to him beauty is just skin deep it's what's inside that matters yeah and he tells her that she gives him butterflies yeah and that's why i could kind of feel like his conversation seems kind of like like 
weird. It kind of seemed out of place. Uh huh. As to where it's like you give me butterflies, really. It, 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 it's like you know what to say but i don't think you know when to say it right it's like you don't feel the energy of the conversation exactly. leading to that yeah and i i agree with that um i also kind of think like is it possible help me that sam is just a very open um Widow. and <laughs> open and passionate person and he might feel things quickly and intensely do you think that that's an option i don't i feel like i you mean, don't <laughs> <laughs> i feel like when you come on that strong it's not real oh okay. i don't know like okay. i just feel like him saying she gives me butterflies is the second time we talked the first time we talked you were just talking about yeah. how people misconstrue you mm-hmm. i don't i don't i didn't feel the connection that i ain't feel it there. either um mm-hmm. i don't know i don't know it from this episode Okay. Maybe later on in episode two, once we get deeper mm-hmm. to when we get to that specific scene, maybe it makes sense. But honestly, going back, I did not think it when I saw it. Okay. You get what I'm saying? So next we have Jasmine and Bobby. Yeah. They both consider themselves nomads. Okay. So he is a luxury shopping guide on mm-hmm. cruise ships, mm-hmm. but he's ready to move away from that lifestyle, be a little bit more stable. Okay. In relationships, he wants someone that he can vibe with, not just a partner, but also a friend. Okay. He shares that he was raised by a single mom. They're both uh, family oriented mm-hmm. and he would like kids possibly sometime soon. Okay. Nice. Jasmine is uh, just sharing that the date with Bobby went well, mm-hmm. but something is telling her that sam is not a go like he's not it mm, okay interesting so benaya um and nicole have their second date mm-hmm. they both have been thinking about each other like the whole time since yeah. their last date they are aligned on their values and also of their thoughts about like mind body connection yeah she asked if he would be settled with his partner when he's ready to settle down. Mm -hmm. And he says that he would like a home base. Like Mm -hmm. the traveling is kind of an element of escapism to him. He had a difficult childhood, um, but now he's in a place where he is at peace with everything. Yeah. And they want to continue to see and talk to each other. Yeah. I need Mm -hmm. you to be a little bit more specific because even though there's home base, there's three other bases on a baseball field. Mm. So home base could just mean a place that I come and recharge. Mm hmm but you still moving yeah you get what i'm saying i need are you gonna be traveling as much <laughs> like, <laughs> I like need, what does your life look like exactly in exactly yeah. exactly but but, yeah. but but it's early so like like just just in case you're new here this is my wife blair she is the one that recaps the show i'm the one that just gives my opinion about it i am very lapsed right now mm-hmm. you get what i'm saying i am not <laughs> i'm not being myself at the moment because the first episode mm-hmm. but i'm sure by episode two three four y'all go turn the volume down because i'm a holler <laughs> you get what i'm saying it's just the thing it's just this love relationship that we have love hate you know what i mean mm-hmm. it's all good so sabrina is sharing her conversation um with steven mm-hmm. uh sabrina and steven talk yeah uh, steven was thinking about her and their conversation uh-huh. he knows that he wants to be a dad okay okay sabrina wants to build her life as a husband and a wife first she's yeah. 33 by the time she has kids it might be 39 and she might not be able to conceive by that time mm. she's open to surrogacy or adoption um and he says that he's ready for that that's something he can get behind now start right here for a second now how do we get from 33 to 39 Mm-hmm. Like this life that you're going to live is going to be a six year process, maybe five year process. Y'all go get married on the show. Yeah. <laughs> you do. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. So, so, so is there any, is this her way of saying that she, I don't want to do absolutes, but just bear with me. Take this with a grain of salt. Is this her way of saying, I don't want to be a mother? No, I don't take it that way. Because I'm like, I know you said you want to build a life of a wife first being married first Mm -hmm. and then you going so far down the line till you're practically 40 and you're basically like hey we may gotta adopt that's kind of like that's kind of like giving me hope well maybe besides hold on one second okay that's kind of like giving me hope besides someone who knows that their clock is not um eternal and things like that that they'd be like because i'm 33 I want to be a mother and I want to try basically at 34, 35, but stop pushing it to 40. Do am I making sense just a little bit? You are making sense. Um, but how do I say it? You're making sense because if somebody really wants to be a mother, 
um, then yes, the biological clock is at the front of their mind and yeah. they probably do want to get started on that as soon as possible. Mm -hmm. But I think also if she's somebody who values marriage and that relationship, mm -hmm. she doesn't want to bring a child into a newly formed relationship. Even though we're married, we literally just met like a year ago. On a TV show. <laughs> on a TV <laughs> yeah, show. Yeah. So I can understand how she might want to take more time to get to know her partner mm -hmm. to make sure she's bringing a child into a more solid situation. Okay. And I think that for people who you know when you're younger like dating in your 20s mm -hmm. and settle down with the person like in your early to late 20s mm -hmm. you do have the benefit of time to actually get to know the person yeah so that by the time you're in your 30s you can start having kids if the, it was important for you to build that solid relationship okay now when you get into your mid to late 30s as a woman um Time is of the essence, yeah. but I can also understand her not wanting to um, take away the the solid foundation of a family just to have a baby. Yeah. Like, I think it would be putting something on rocky ground in, you know, the way that she's looking at it. I'm going to so. put that to the side and just put a question mark on her for that. Okay. Because that's like, that's... Uh, to me, that to me, it's kind of like she's selling me something. It's kind of like she gave me. And it might be. If, it it, it kind of like she gave me magic beans. And maybe that's like if you're reading between the lines, that's kind of what you see. And yeah. I can see it, but I don't know if that's it. Okay. So he does ask her about her childhood. Her parents divorced when she was 13. Yeah. Her dad wasn't around a lot. Um, she at one point she didn't contact him because she wanted to see how long it would take for him to contact her, mm -hmm. and he never spoke to her again. So. When she was 28, her mom told her that the guy that she thought was her dad was not actually her dad. Mm -hmm. Her dad was from Italy, and he moved back to Italy. The mm -hmm. mom didn't want to move to Italy. She wanted to stay in Ireland. Yeah. Um, and then she became guarded with men due to her pretty much daddy issues. Yeah. And she was just hurt because she was named after some guy that wasn't really her dad, and she didn't have a, a relationship with, with to this day. That's facts. So... So Stephen doesn't feel like she's been guarded. Mm -hmm. um, he said that he had a long-term girlfriend who was ill for a few months. They yep. found a tumor. She fought for her life for about eight months and then decided to break up with him so she could focus on herself. Mm -hmm. He thinks that, you know, she's okay now as far as her health, just that their relationship couldn't survive while she was going through that. Yeah. And and look, mm -hmm. I like what he said. He said, she asked, is, is she okay? He said, I think so. Mm -hmm. Because we broke up. And this, there's nothing really too much to add it from my perspective. It's just like, okay, y'all sharing a lot of deep things. Y'all getting to basically behind the person, behind the attraction of y'all may, uh, uh, so y'all may build deeper connections. That's all I have for that. Yeah. And I, and I also feel like, I don't think she was being guarded. I feel like she was being pretty open, but I think it might be the benefit of it being love is blind. Like you're behind a wall. So you might not feel the stress of just like, I'm talking to this guy, whatever the case may be. Like yeah. you can kind of let your guard down a little bit. So okay. uh, just not having that face to face. So Catherine and Freddie talk. So both of their grandmas were called Mary. Mm -hmm. Their granddads were both called Bill. And my thought was, y'all not going to try to figure out if y'all related. <laughs> Nasty. <laughs> I'm just right? like, and they were just like, oh, that's so wild. I'm just like, Kissing let's cousins. ask some more questions. Exactly. So she starts crying. Um, they just have a lot in common. And Ollie at this point has her head confused. Okay. Ollie says that he is very affectionate um, and she, Catherine, thinks that Ollie is sexy. Okay. They talk about what they both um, are going to wear to bed and Ollie apparently doesn't wear much of nothing. Mm -hmm. So this is just kind of flirty, sexual kind of vibes going hey, on. Going back to my toxic thing. <laughs> going back to my toxic thing. She ain't using her time to talk about anything of worth. Mm -hmm. Instead, she said, I think he's sexy and things of that nature. But I see you, Catherine. So we get to Demi and Ollie. Yeah. She asks, what um, will you be like if I'm snappy, if I'm having an attitude? Uh-oh. He says he's going to do what he needs to do. Some people need space, but she seems like the person who needs cuddles and forehead kisses. Mm -hmm. And Demi agrees, you know, if you would have asked me before, I probably would have said I need a space, yeah. but I really am somebody who needs reassurance. Okay. So she's feeling him. He's not 100% sure about where he is at mm -hmm. and lets her know that, you know, he's still giving um, other girls a chance. Okay. I like that. Demi wants Ollie. Even though she know Cass knows Catherine likes him, mm -hmm. she is going to put herself first in mm -hmm. the situation. Otherwise, she will be alone with ten cats, and she don't even like cats. And the funny, so. <laughs> and the funny thing about it is, before like you say that last line, mm -hmm. she said that she's a people pleaser, and it sucks. And she says she's intentionally choosing mm -hmm. to put herself first. Yeah, and Catherine doesn't see them being together on the outside. Why she doesn't get it? Why? 
I think that maybe Catherine doesn't think Demi compares a, to her. Is attractive. In her eyes. Like, I feel like Catherine thinks that she's the more attractive person. Of course. So. Of course. Because mm-hmm. she got a little meat on the bone mm-hmm. and things of that nature. So, like, of course she would think that. Yeah. And that's another reason why I think she's toxic. Mm-hmm. But let's keep going. So, we get to Steven and Sabrina. Yeah. He wrote her a letter saying that she stole his mind and his heart. Yeah. And that was, like, just the first portion of a poem. And he finishes the poem by speaking it to her. Mm-hmm. And he tells her he loves her and he proposes. She tells him he's amazing, and then we end on a butt. Hey, listen here. <laughs> I need y'all to subscribe, like, share, comment. I'm going to release an episode a day. Mm-hmm. Okay? I want to know what y'all think about Steven's poem. Is it too early that he said, I love you? Because at the end of the day, I was feeling everything until he said, I love you, and then I just remember what I was watching. Yeah, that's when I rolled my eyes. I was like, you love her. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> I, I realized what I was watching. I was like, I'm watching a Netflix show of people who just met and he is so quickly there. Maybe this process make you, you know, get to that point fast. I don't know. You know what I'm I saying? Feel like you could have waited to say that at least. Wait. You know, Even after you hanging it. out with her for a couple of days. Even <laughs> if you feel it. I know on Love Island and things like that, we had a conversation where me and Blair disagreed because she said, if you feel it, you should say it. I'm like, hey, brother, not episode one. You shouldn't say it. <laughs> OK, I, 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 I know mm. I wouldn't have said it. Mm. I need you to subscribe, like, share, comment. Let me know what y'all think. We'll be back with episode two in less than 24 hours. Y'all be good. Bye.